mapping theorem. And let me just remind you of what that said. Uh, so the theorem was this. X has to be complete. And T from X to X satisfies the distance Tx to Ty less than or equal to C distance from x to y for a constant C less than 1. And then the conclusion is T has a unique should just be that uh, the distance here is, say, strictly less than d of x, y. But that's not quite good enough. <coughs> so the c less than 1 is important. showed you an example where if we don't <coughs> have a complete metric space, we can have a contraction without a fixed point. Uh, so here, let's take x to be the closed interval 1 to infinity. So that's a nice complete metric space. This is complete. And then I'm going to define a function t from x to x by t of x is equal to x plus 1 over x. T has no fixed point. The equation Tx equals x becomes x plus 1 over x is equal to x, and so 1 over x is equal to 0. Since there's no value of x that satisfies that, See, there's no solution. And so T has no fixed point. However, <coughs> it is it is a contraction in some sense. And often the way to see this is to use the mean <coughs> value. So, using the mean value theorem, for two points x and y in the interval 1 infinity, <coughs> the absolute value t of x minus t of y divided by the absolute value of x minus y is equal to the absolute value of the derivative at some point c with c between So what's the derivative? Well, t prime is 1 minus 1 over x squared so t 
prime c is 1 minus 1 over c squared. Now, all our numbers are in the interval 1 to infinity. So 1 over c squared is a positive number that is less than or equal to 1. And consequently, the absolute value of t prime of c is 1 minus 1 over c squared, which is strictly less than 1. Consequently, we will always have that the distance between t of x and t of y will be strictly less than the distance between x and y. If we could have this inequality with a fixed number c less than 1 in here, and so a fixed point, the fact that there is no fixed point means that there is no constant that we can put in here. But no c less than 1 exists with the absolute value of t of x minus t of y less than or equal to c times absolute value of x minus y. So this example shows that you cannot relax the conditions and say, well, instead of having this constant less than 1 in there, perhaps we could just have strict inequality instead. This shows that it doesn't work. And if you think about it, points that are coming close together, <coughs> they'll be close when x is large because the 1 over x is going to 0. So far enough down the x-axis, x and t of x are becoming very close, but they never actually coincide. function is t of x is equal to cosine x. Show that this has a fixed point. Now, if you want to uh, prove this using the mapping principle, then what you have to do is find an appropriate metric 
space on which uh, we want to act. So in order to do that, let's not specify it just yet, because this is more or less how you would go about solving such a problem. Let's have a look at t of x minus t of y. So this is cosine x minus cosine y. And we want that that's less than or equal to a constant times x minus y. So the first thing you should think of is the mean value theorem. So this is equal to some point C times the absolute value of x minus y. So we want an interval So that T applied to I comes back inside I because the function must map the metric space to itself. But also, <coughs> in order to get the bits of contraction there, we'll want to have an interval where sine C is strictly less than 1. Less than or equal to what, but not less than or equal. Okay. okay. Uh, so this is going to peak at pi over 2. And the values of cosine x in absolute value are at most 1. So whenever you apply t to any x, you'll end up back in the interval Also, the absolute value of sine x restricted to i, how big can that be? Well, if we look at the graph, it peaks at pi over 2 and it minimizes at negative pi over 2. Pi over 2 is roughly 1.5, and so 1 and negative 1 are there, and so the biggest value we could have is sine 1. This is less than or equal to sine 1, which is strictly less than absolute value, cosine x minus cosine y, is less than or equal to c times the absolute value of x minus y, where c is equal to the sine of 1. And that is strictly less than 1. So all the conditions of the, um, of the theorem are satisfied. We have a contraction function maps the interval to the interval, and therefore there is a point x in the interval negative 1, 1, where the cosine of x is equal to x.
you can move everything to one side, so you can always write an equation as something equal to zero. Can be set up as fixed point problems. writing as f of x plus x is equal to x. And then the thing on the left-hand side, I'll just call that t of x. t of x equals x, where my new function old one, f of x plus x. And now, the solution to the original equation is a fixed point for the new function, t. <coughs> Sometimes in the applications that we're going to look at shortly, uh, T itself may not be a contraction, but maybe if you apply it a few times, then it will be. So, just to establish the notation, uh, T to the N the function n times. For example, if t of x is cosine x, just as in the last equation, then Sine x, you apply it again, cosine of cosine x, and then you apply it a third time, cosine of cosine of cosine x. So there's a variant on the original contraction mapping principle, and that is the following. space and let T from 
to x. Be a function so that t to the n is a contraction for some n greater than 1. Of course, if <coughs> n were equal to 1, then we've already dealt with that. That's just the contraction mapping theorem. And then we have the same conclusion that t has a unique fixed point. So it's exactly the same conclusion, but under a weaker hypothesis, we're not assuming that T is itself is a contraction, but after we've applied it a certain number of times, then it is a contraction. to the n is a contraction means that that function has a fixed point. So by Bullock's contraction theorem, t to the n has a fixed point x0 in our metric space. And therefore, t to the n applied to x0 is equal to x0. t to that equation, then you get t to the n plus 1 of x0 is equal to t of x0. And I can rewrite that if I apply the function n plus 1 one times, I can think of it as applying it once, followed by applying it n times. So t to the n applied to t of x0 is equal to t of x0. Now this last equation says that t of x0 is a fixed point for t to the n. point for t to the n 
is actually a fixed point for T as well. So therefore, T has a fixed point. Suppose T has two fixed points. have that x0 is equal to x1, and consequently t has a unique fixed point. So this is the extension. We don't absolutely require that t itself should be a contraction. We get the same conclusion as long as applying T a certain number of times produces a contraction. of taking a limit as n goes to infinity, but we wouldn't know too much about, about that function. Now, we've already seen uh, an instance where the mean value theorem uh, can help you, and you get an inequality for a function that said f of x minus f of y in absolute value is less than or equal to a constant times x minus y. This kind of thing has a name. A function f of x on an interval. to satisfy a Lipschitz condition, or we just say that F is Lipschitz, if there is a constant minus f of y, this is 
less than or equal to k times the absolute value of x minus y for x and y in the interval. Going back to that cosine x example, there we found such an inequality based on the mean value theorem. So we have a little lemma. example, the function f of x is equal to tan to the minus 1x on the whole real line. Here, its derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared, and that is always less than or equal to And therefore, for this function, we'll have that f of x minus f of y is always less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus y.
So that worked on the whole real line. Sometimes we have to restrict. So for example, the function f of x is equal to e to the negative x has that the absolute value of the derivative is, well, when I differentiate, I get negative e to the negative x. So the absolute value of it is e to the negative x. Now, this goes off to infinity as x goes to minus infinity. But as long as I stay to the right of some point, I will always have a bound. Uh, and this is bounded on an interval a to infinity for any a. But as I let a go off to minus infinity, the bound is going to get bigger. So it won't have a Lipschitz condition on the whole real line, but on any half-infinite interval going to the right, it will have a bound. So the bound is e to the negative a. Having a Lipschitz condition, is very close to having a bounded derivative. y, so that's the Lipschitz condition. And f is differentiable. absolute value. So that's the typical difference quotient that you would form in order to compute the derivative as h goes to 0. If I apply this with one of the points being x0 plus h and the other one being x0, which are h apart, we get that this is less than or equal to then let h go to 0, and we'll get that the absolute value of the derivative at x0, which we're assuming exists, I'm not claiming that this inequality means that the derivative exists, but if we know independently that the derivative exists, then we will get a bounded derivative. The derivative is bounded at that point by the number. So what's the difference? Why isn't Lipschitz just the same as having a bounded derivative? Well, you can have Lipschitz. 
Richard's functions that don't have derivatives. and estimate the difference between the value of the function there. Uh, now, there's no difficulty if I have two points to the left of zero, because then, I, then I'm just using the function negative x. There's no problem having two points to the right of zero, because there I'm using the function x. So the only difficulty that can occur is if I have one point to the left and one point to the right. So, it's enough to show for x less than 0 and y greater than 0. find a constant
y plus x is less than or equal to the difference between the points is y minus x times a constant k. idea is that when y minus x is far apart, there's no problem. But when y and x come close together, then this is going to be very small also. 